I, th I think that Minsk is a symptom, and indeed, um, according to my model of how I understand things, I would argue that the whole Ukraine crisis is a symptom of a larger dilemma, if you like, uh, no more than that, um, and therefore Minsk is a staging post. My argument is, is that Minsk 1 and 2 will not survive unless it's embedded in a larger regional, indeed global, solution or some sort of settlement, and this is what we're waiting for. Ultimately, our big puzzle is, why uh, is Russia, which was such a cooperative, such a, an engaged um, society uh, in 1991, in the early 1990s, with, all of the, with a social consensus, a political consensus, to adapt to Western structures? There were debates, of course, but uh, overall there was a general consensus on the, uh, the line of movement. Why, uh, 20 years later, has it failed? And it's failed quite clearly, and as I said, even at the beginning, it was clear that uh, we were moving into a situation of cold peace. This is the term devised by Yeltsin in uh, December 1994, and the symptoms were quite clear. Of course, no one said it was going to be easy, uh, but nevertheless, uh, some way or other, um, this, this cold peace, which exploded in, in Ukraine last year, because we saw uh, ever more acceleration, exacerbation of a logic of conflict, rather than a logic of reconciliation, uh, which uh, we were assuming would be dominating after 1989. Now, you could say, uh, ultimately, uh, the West wasn't, uh, wasn't hostile to Russia as long as Russia would know its place, uh, as long as it would accept uh, that ultimately Western values and ideology won which Russia wasn't actually debating or questioning. Uh, this is why it joined the Council of Europe, why it signed up to the, all the various protocols of the Council of Europe and you know, Euro European Convention on Human Rights and all the rest. Um, but on the other hand, it was quite clear that this language of Russia as a great power is a symbolic language. It's a language which signifies ultimately Yes, we will be part of the new world order, if you like, but we will retain our autonomy in it. And also, we would like to be joint managers. Obviously, we're not going to be at the same level of the United States, but ultimately, you've got to respect that sometimes we will have our own views. Uh, how can Russia be talking about pluralism at the international level when it undermines it at the domestic level, when you have a single source of authority and you have a, a, a political system which lacks competition, competitiveness? It does, there is competition, but not very competitive. My argument there would be is that there is a, uh, a fundamental difference because the challenges domestically are genuinely enormous. We saw the uh, issue, and in fact, uh, the divergent positions and developments within the Ukraine and Russia are perhaps symbolic of it, uh, where you have still in Ukraine very, very powerful oligarchs, for example, which merged with regional power. And uh, in many ways, this was perceived to be a genuine challenge to the Russian state in the development of tax revenues and so on. At the d international level, I believe Russia genuinely believes in pluralism. It obviously wants its place in the sun, but it believes in a system of a number, what well, multipolarity was the code word in the past, as opposed to what it sees is a type of hegemonic system. So absolutely, I think that we are talking about, on the one side, a US hegemony. Now, this US hegemony has delivered many good public goods over the last generation, because it was seen to be the dominant player uh, in terms of world governance and so on. However, it has also been massively dysfunctional at earlier periods. As you know, the United States has supported all sorts of right-wing dictatorships in Latin America in those 45 years of the Cold War. And then suddenly, after 1989, it has flipped and said, we are benign, peaceful, democracy, trans-democratic power, and so on. And indeed, it, the circumstances have changed and the United States does not on the whole support right-wing military dictatorships anymore than it, as it used to. Nevertheless, its claims to this sort of hegemonic dominance is inevitably challenged by countries. In a thousand years of history, Russia has never voluntarily subordinated itself to another external power. And it's not going to start now and therefore the world is genuinely more pluralistic by its very essence with the emergence of China, with the emergence of Russia, the putative emergence of India, 
So, uh, yes, I, I think the answer is, but we then need to find a way of reconciling it. I don't see this has to be the council. So how do you see the United Nations system, which Russia constantly talks about, and especially with the five permanent members of the Security Council?